seconds away on Studio 5. I mean, the truth is we have to do this. Barbershop opens number two at the box office. We're sitting down with the director. We are, we are twins. twins, you know. No, if you hit, hit me, me, I'm not gonna feel She's it. She's not gonna feel it. A double dose of laughter with this comedy duo in Studio 5, which starts right now. What's going on, hungry black folks? Huh? Who wants some non-profit gangster grub? All right, soul food to save full soul. Every delicious piece of beef helps keep a bullet off the street. Cut! <laughs> hey, I'm Malcolm D. Lee, director of Barbershop, the next cut, and I'm in Studio 5. Thanks, Malcolm. He is one of my favorite film writers and directors of all time, and he's sitting down with us in just a bit. We're talking Barbershop, The Best Man, and so much more. But before we get to Malcolm and a dose of laughter in this fun-filled show, let's run down what entertainment stories are trending this week. This is your Top 5 from Studio 5. Here's a question for you. Is Pope Francis a Katy Perry fan? At number five, the pop singer wins a court battle against Los Angeles nuns. She offered the nuns nearly $15 million for their convent, but they decided to sell to someone else. One problem, the nuns don't own it. The Catholic Church does. So the court sided with Perry. Now we'll see if the Vatican agrees. On to number four, Kathy Lee Gifford opens up about her trip to the Holy Land. Israel has been important to me since I was 12 years old when I came to faith in Yeshua, Jesus. She traveled with a group from various faiths, but says the trip changed the perspective of those who didn't believe in Jesus before. The power of your word. Number three, 17-year-old Augusta Uwamenzuna has a big decision to make. So I took out my phone and I started looking at each school and I came to the last one and I just yelled and started screaming. All eight Ivy League colleges accepted the high schooler. The daughter of Nigerian immigrants credits her success to the support of her parents. At number two, country star Blake Shelton releases a gospel song on his new album. I'm standing in my savior shadow. Songwriter Jesse Alexander helped him with the song and says, It came deep from Blake's soul, and we were just glad we got to kind of help him birth it. And now the drum roll to number one. R&B star Chris Brown opens up in a new documentary called Welcome to My Life. The apologetic and at times repentant 26-year-old addresses his assault of singer Rihanna in 2009. I went from being on top of the world, number one songs, and being kind of like America's sweetheart to being public enemy number one. Right now, there is no official release date for the film. And those are your top five from Studio 5. Malcolm D. Lee has directed the film's undercover brother, The Best Man, Roll Bounce, Welcome Home Roscoe Jenkins, Soul Men, The Best Man Holiday, and so many more. He now adds the Barbershop franchise to his impressive resume with Barbershop, The Next Cut. The film tackles the issue of gang and gun violence in the Windy City with a dose of laughter and a message of hope. We're talking with Malcolm about both in this Studio 5 interview. So what you say? Embarrass myself? What you mean embarrass myself? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here on the set of Barbershop The Next Cut, director Malcolm D. Lee aimed to strike the right tone with the story set in the Windy City. We're dealing with a lot of um, really tough issues when it comes to gang violence and gun violence in the city of Chicago, which is really ground zero for gun violence in America. Mm -hmm. So I felt like we wanted to set the right tone, but at the same time, never let the audience forget that they were in a comedy. So you playing Celebrity Bob and, I, and I, I'm Mr. Mom. You're the one who said you wanted to spend more time with Maya and Kenny, so what's the problem? Sometime. Half your clients was mine to start. Oh, you complaining now? When Kenny's mom asked if he could spend the remainder of high school with us, I was cool with it. But since he's been with us, he's done nothing to help out. Yeah, come on now. It's like we have two toddlers in the house. It's a new situation. It's not no, a, new it situation. a new situation. It's, it's been a year. It's taking a little time. You know how long he was his mother. I understand I know that. All right, y'all. Yo, Terry, you shy. Yo, do y'all need a minute? Because we'll all leave. You know what? I'm going to leave. 
It's like love and hip hop reunion in here. How difficult was it to navigate that? I mean, Spike Lee's Chirac didn't go over very well with the audience, it seemed. How difficult was it in terms of this being a comedy and navigating that conversation about the violence in Chicago? You know, the, the kind of balance that, that this a movie, a storytelling of this nature is really in my wheelhouse, and, and I, I kind of take pride in the fact that I'm able to balance tone very well. This is an established franchise also, you know, it was very um, you know, beloved by the fans. Uh, I knew I wanted to make it funny, uh, and I knew that I had to treat the violence or the threat of violence very seriously. And in my past movies, um, I feel like I'm, I do that well, and I, I've tried to strike that balance because to me it's like, you know, you're telling a story that is real and grounded, Life is not just one way. No. Life is not just all comedic. Not, life is not all dramatic or emotional. People aren't one way or another. You know, there, there, people, there are people who have a range of emotions and a range of things that they, that they feel, think, and see. And I wanted to express that on film. I try to do that as much as I can in, 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 in my films. What's going on, hungry black folks? Huh? Who wants some non-profit gangster grub? All right, soul food to save full soul. Every delicious piece of beef helps keep a bullet off the street. I know that's right, because that who smoked your okra was popping in one fleek last time. There you go, Greg. Did she just say fleek? Don't, don't just make up word, right? There's a whole dictionary full of words. Okay, it's library down the street, Webster's Dictionary. Go on there and flip through it. You won't see Fleek in there nowhere. Uh, uh, <laughs> don't worry about that. I got some Don't Be So Mean Greens in there for you today, too. You're going to love it. They so good. When you're dealing with those kinds of actors, especially comedic actors, you got to let them kind of go, you know, because <laughs> you're going to get the best results that way. Uh -huh. Again, I wanted to make a funny movie. I didn't cast these people not to be funny. Mm -hmm. I, you know, do what's on the page, but also it's a comedian's job to find what's funny in the moment. And they feed off of one another. So I always encourage that, even though it ends up being, you know, what, is, what was started as a four-page scene ends up being a ten-page scene, <laughs> and I have to look through hours and hours of dailies. Mm -hmm. I didn't really catch up until the very end of the shoot. Um, and, I even, and I really, I was like midway through um, post before I <laughs> caught up with all the <laughs> really? dailies. But you know, you have to do that and, 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 and sift around and find what's best for the story and what's gonna, where the comedy's gonna land. Um, so for me, uh, it's, it's difficult for sure, but I encourage it to, to happen. Beyond the Barbershop, Malcolm has a film franchise of his own. He's the writer and director behind the romantic comedies The Best Man and The Best Man Holiday. Everyone would like to know, when do we get The Best Man Wedding? It's a good question. <laughs> An excellent question. People have been, strangely, they've been asking me about this. Um, you know, the, the, there's a desire on my part to do the, the movie, to do the sequel. A desire on the cast part, a desire on the studio's part. It's really, God bless all the, the actors, they are working a lot right now. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to figure out the schedule that was going to fit with everyone. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, in the near future, we will get that off the ground because the script is written. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a budget that we're still wrestling with. You're always wrestling with your budget. And we all just, it's just a matter of trying to schedule everybody. Because there was a, a big wait in between the first and second. Yeah, you know hopefully I mean? it won't be that long. How was, long was it? 14 years. 14 years, I knew it was a long time. It, but that really wasn't, um, it was, wasn't certainly by design, but it wasn't, I wasn't planning on making a, a, a sequel right away anyway, um, with, with, between the first and the second films. Uh, I wanted to live some life first. I wanted to have the characters live some life and, and want to do something a little bit more dramatic the second time around. Mm -hmm. This time around with the West Best Man Wedding, I want to make it the funny, uh, funniest uh -huh, of the okay. franchise. Um, it, it is a straight comedy. Uh, you know, it's going to have the heart and emotion to it as well, mm -hmm. but the plan is to make it, you know, funny and sexy. Barbershop, the next cut, is in theaters now. It is funny and it is hopeful, but the language is not appropriate for younger audiences. It's rated PG-13. Still ahead, here on Studio 5. At that time, she left her teeth in Walgreens. That's right, that's right, <laughs> and we had to call to look for it, and you know. Comedy twins Shonda and Rhonda are warming up to bring us a dose of laughter. And welcome back to Studio 5. We are introducing a new segment called A Dose of Funny, A Dose of Laughter. Welcome, Double Vision, Shonda and Rhonda, the comedy team. You guys are twins. Yes. If we look closely, we can see that. Definitely. And you guys 
bring the funny to real life situations. That's right. That's right. Uh, all right, twins. Yes. And, and you've been making people laugh how long? All of our life. Thirty six years. Thirty six years come July. Thirty six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we pulled some things that we've been covering and that have been popular on our website um, that we want to get your take on to see how okay. okay. you bring the funny. The first, Tracy Morgan has been talking with Oprah about his near-death experience. Yes. Have you guys follow that? Yeah, we, we have, you know. <laughs> and um, the first thing that sticks out to me is the green suit that he said his father had on. <laughs> yes. Okay. And yeah. was his father... <laughs> all the things he could say. The green suit, was he a pimp in a form of life? <laughs> Oh, no. You know, did he work on, um, was he an orderly? You know, um, is he sure it was his dad? Okay. You know, um, the, the the thing that we like the most, Tracy Morgan, he he he's coming back to life. He was resurrected. The story came out near Easter. You yes, know, it so did. Uh, it, did. It, it was a good play. You know, he, he lives. <laughs> he said, well, you know, the passion was coming soon, and he said, "What a way to um, book what, a show." Yeah, what good marketing. He's on tour with that now. Yeah, absolutely. He is. Absolutely. He is. He is. He is. He is. So. Next up, we got Kanye West singing gospel music. Justin Bieber praying with with Kanye. Mm -hmm. I mean, these mm -hmm. celebrities who aren't, you know, always getting, making headlines for good things, seem to be embracing Christ now. Well, what better time than now? Um, <laughs> you know, it, I mean, they, obviously, it doesn't hurt no, to, for them all. to embrace him, you know? And, and, you know, it's trendy. It's, it's trendy to be saved now. You know? <laughs> it's trendy. It, 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 it is. I'm saying, you know, <laughs> Jack, won't he do it? You know, won't he will? So, you know. Yeah. I say, listen, Jesus came, you know, he, they said he was from a, a lowly place. And for those mm. who don't know, that was the hood. Absolutely. So I say, go for it. You know, be saved, be it for real, live. You know? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> um, you guys are parents. Yes. I'm a parent. When I hear this next story, I always feel inadequate as a parent. We have a young woman who has gotten into all eight mm -hmm. Ivy League schools. I'm going to mess up her name. I know I am. It's Augusta. Uwa Manzuna. Mm, yes. Very good. Very good. good. You know, Thank you. I tried. That was, that was I really tried. good. Listen, it's amazing. It, it is. The, it, the, the thing as a parent, because you want to have your kids prepared, mm -hmm. but, you know, I tell my kid, listen, you know, cheat. I mean, do what you have to do. <laughs> because, you know, this is a lot. Did you see what her GPA was? I, I it said 101.6. Is that temperature outside? What, what is that? Oh, my God. How is that even possible? And, I, I, you know, so um, I'm excited, you know, um, my daughter has a little bit of Korean in her, so hopefully that'll work. <laughs> but um, that's, not, that's not nice. No. Um, that's not okay. <laughs> oh, okay. But um, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, um, gotcha. that ancestry. Indeed. But it's, it's, an, it's very impressive, you know. The um, pearls she had on was super impressive. That's and, right. Um, she had her Michelle Obama. So, I mean, I say, hey, I think the she same can day work I, it out. I was <laughs> celebrating my 50-year-old cleaning up his room, and she's <laughs> getting in all eight Ivy League. Exactly. Ooh. Exactly. Ooh. You know, Ooh, I I'm still you. trying to get my four-year-old to speak clear. So I don't, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. It's coming. It, it is. Coming. It is. Won't he will. All right. Now, this one, I don't have to say much. The presidential election. Lord. <laughs> All of them come into office with that nice brown hair, black hair. Mm -hmm. By the time it's over, you know, they have that silver, mm -hmm. dusty, you know, stress hair. Yeah. Well, Bernie Sanders, he already has it. So we feel like this. It's going to have the reverse. Okay. He's going to be like Benjamin Button. <laughs> and so he's going to look like the millennials that follow him, you I'll know. So it. either that or, you know. Either that he'll be the crypt keeper and we'll be, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Bernie, he, yeah, that's not going to work and, for him. And, um, and Trump, you know, um, as a... Um, a scholar of the word yes, of know. the Lord. <laughs> it, it says that um, the those where there is confusion, <laughs> thus there is not the Lord. And I don't know where the part is in his hair with Trump, so there's confusion. There's no need to talk about it. It's not. There's no need. There's no need. There's no need. I'll take happening. that scripture <laughs> from the book of Nicodemus. Yeah, right, that's right. Book of Nicodemus. Here we go. Shonda Pierce, um, is a comedian. Um, she travels the country. Uh, she has a documentary out called Laughing in the Dark. I recently interviewed her, and she talks about literally in one year, losing her husband of 31 years, yes. losing her mom, mm -hmm. battling depression, but somehow she still managed to laugh and is back on tour and, and laughing. How does laughter help you guys get through rough times? It's therapy. Um, it, it is. You know, the, the funny thing, you know, you talked about how long we've been doing comedy. We actually started comedy from being bullied. You know, mm. um, when we were younger, you know, before people were threatening to kill each other and things like that with bullying, um, 
Children just pick on the worst things. Our hair was a little thin on the side, and you know, a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't funny, but I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, and, and so kids would make fun of us and ask if we were cancer patients. You know, so how many more treatments you got? You know, oh. our mother was a little girthy. They would ask her, you oh know, she was having word. triplets. You know, so from being bullied, we rose above that, and then throughout our life, it became our defense mechanism. Mm. Absolutely. You know, to be funny. You know, well, in every okay. situation, you know, people. I, I teach as well, and I'm always preaching to my students that you don't have to fight. Uh -huh. And they're like, you know, you mean to tell me you never fought in your entire life? No, I actually have not. Now, there was a time where I was being surrounded by some girls. Oh, I, I was going to we talk about that. We were going to talk about that. <laughs> and um, you know, I looked to my left for my home girl, my road dog, Rhonda. She was gone. And um, I said, oh, well, Lord, I'm going to get beat down. But I did not because I started talking my way out of it. I started joking and joking them, joking myself, joking the situation. And I've never been in a fight because I, I was like, this is this gift that God has given us mm -hmm. to make people laugh. The last thing, your shirts? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I'm, I'm Baby Do It. <laughs> okay. And, and basically, I'm Baby Do It. It's I'm not going to do that. It's a way of saying no. Mm -hmm. But you got to say it so fast, kind of like you're geeky a little bit. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you know. people don't really understand, but they ask requests. You know, at church, we see this all the time. You young, you already kids, I'm Baby Do It. <laughs> So I got a yes or no. I ain't bad to do it. I ain't bad to do it. You know, your husband wakes you up in the middle of the night. I ain't bad to do it. Let's not show my wife those t-shirts. All right. I ain't bad to do it. I ain't bad to do it. Well, double vision, Shonda, Rhonda. Thank you. You guys are available to travel anywhere and deliver clean comedy. Absolutely. Clean comedy. That is us. The laughter doesn't end here. Always. Where you coming from? Where the traffic is. is. So, I ain't babe do it. I ain't babe do it, you know. Shonda and Rhonda return to keep us rolling next. And welcome back to Studio 5. Today we are bringing the funny with comedian Shonda and Rhonda, twins, double vision. We are indeed seeing double. Yeah. <laughs> They've got a beautiful set for you. They're going to make you laugh. I'm going to step out of the way so they can take it away. You know, we like to talk about things that are, you know, people don't, they like to stay away from. And we understand that the country now is having a lot of issues with race relations. Absolutely, yes. And so we would like we to... We want to just get right into it and talk about it, you know. You know, we, we want to tell you what our formula is, is that you got to know the code. Absolutely. You have to know the code. You got to know the code. Oh, you're confused what the code is. Now listen, play close attention because we're about to tell you something that's top secret. It's top secret. And um, we're going to release it. So if you're at a function at your job and um, let's say a potluck, and you know, you see one of your um, African American, we're gonna call them beautiful. Beautiful. We, we like to say beautiful and wonderful. And wonderful. You can figure that out. And you can fit in one or two of the categories, There's either no beautiful gray area. or wonderful, you know. One or two. All ethnicities fit in one or the other. So you see one of your beautiful um, co workers talking to another beautiful co worker, and they say, Who cook? They, they cook. cook. We they cook. cook. And basically, you know, it's, it's real quick, and if you don't pay attention, you'll miss it. You miss it. It's just a palm. If beautiful people did it, they're going to point here. If it's wonderful, wonderful people, they point here. here. Now, when a potluck, what normally happens is that if they say that, you know, oh, um, Janie, she cooked. I'm like, she cooked? Janie cooked? She got cats? And, and so, so, you know, we're like, oh, that's mm -mm, okay. I'm, mm -mm. I'm not participating. I, I don't do that because yeah. I think Janie got cats. You know, Janie got cats. Why do we always think one of who got cats that run around in the kitchen Beautiful and people stuff? think one, all wonderful people have cats and that they jump in the pots when they cook the food. You so, know, pray for us here. Race relations. We're, we're, we're know, working on it. We're working we, we, on we, it. We do things differently, you know. But there's also a code, you know, my kids go to a private school where it's... Um, not as, um, what's the word I'm looking at? Diverse. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it's not a lot of um, there. Mm -mm, but it, but it's okay. That. You know, beautiful people and wonderful people, we do things differently and we can learn from one another, especially the wonderful parents. Uh, take a situation, um, a car. Absolutely. You know, you, you get a, a brand new car, and you, and, or it doesn't have to be a brand new car, you know, but your uh, your child has taken the car and they Absolutely. snuck away. Absolutely. And a, a wonderful family, it may go a little bit like this. I kind of snuck out with the car and wrecked it. Total loss. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, come here. Come here. Bring it in. Bring sure. it in. Bring it in. Okay. Bring it in. It's okay. We have insurance. Oh, okay. Are you okay? I'm fine. Oh, mom, I'm just so glad you're okay. Okay. All right. All right. We're you good? all right? We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. You're gonna hashtag me? 
All right. Can I check me? I am. I'm good. I'm going to be cool? We're cool. All right. All Call right. me by my first name. All right. You know, so that's how it's going to go with, with, with a wonderful parent. But now, with a beautiful the... family, not so much. I ain't been do it. It ain't going to happen that way. I got to Something... be there in 10 minutes, 10 minutes ago. Let me go get in the... What in the world? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Shaniqua. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come down these steps. Uh -huh. Shaniqua. Ma'am. What happened in my car? Oh, I don't know what happened. What you mean? What happened? Don't, don't ask me. Tell me what happened. Don't talk to me without asking you to ask questions. I, I, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I got confused. What happened? You know we ain't got no insurance. You know my insurance laughs. <laughs> You're not gonna ask our 22. You're not gonna ask our 22. So it goes a little bit different. We're not you understanding. Know. We, we, we don't. We, we're, we're a little, little uptight. And we are just about out of time for this edition of Studio 5, but we're already hard at work to bring you a great show next week. And that is taking us to Nashville, the music city, to sit down with a country music legend, Dolly Parton. I grew up knowing Jesus loved me, and, and I knew that through God all things were possible, and you know, I just grew up with those little things that we just heard all the time. The legend shares the story of her humble childhood in the film Coat of Many Colors. Stop! In the name of Joseph, it is Coat of Many Colors! And even more of the story with us in Studio 5. My grandpa was a really good preacher. He used to scare me a little bit. He was that <laughs> hellfire brimstone kind of preacher. I wrote a song years ago called Daddy Was an Old Time Preacher Man. It was about him. Dolly is with us next week for now. My favorite film director, Malcolm D. Lee, is back with an encouraging message about the power of uniting. I'm giving Malcolm the final word. I think our film deals very seriously with the, the problem of gang violence and gun violence in America in general. And I think that for us, it was about showing the community that they can do something about it if they come together and stand up and say enough is enough and to come together as, as, a, as an entire unit and be united and say, hey, we can make a difference. We can demand better of our children and make sure that we're not living in a, in a state of despair and hopelessness. I think that's all people have is, is hope. Um, you know, they have hope and they have faith. And, and I think it's faith in our fellow man and in our family and obviously in faith in God. And that is all for today on Studio 5. Until next time, reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And then come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next time.